Hello, good evening and welcome. You've just entered the arena. I'm Michael Corum. Whether you like it or not, and well, thank you so much for joining me. I've always felt very sorry for that municipal politician in Caledonia, Ontario, who, what, five years ago, dared to comment on the illegal native occupation in the area by suggesting, do you remember this? She suggested out loud that most of the actual residents had jobs, while many of those occupying the resident's property didn't seem to have jobs. Golly, the woman was apparently worse than Hitler. Apologize now, resign, have sensitivity training, they yelled. But why? She was completely right. And the same applies to pretty much every long-term protest that we see. Do these people not have bills and mortgages and the rent to pay? Do they not have employers who might wonder where they are? Do they not have families to take care of, responsibilities, or perhaps taxes to pay, taxes that maintain hospitals, provide welfare for public education and the like? We're seeing all this in Wall Street now and other American cities, and it's about to come to Canada. It's the usual scenario, the ugly alliance of students, dropouts, a euphemism for parasites, professional protesters and union types who are paid to stand around looking as if they need a job standing around. Now, there's nothing crass or vulgar about telling someone to get a job. If they're incapable of working, a civilized society will take care of them. But if you look at the mob on Wall Street, you'll see a disproportionately middle-class, white, able-bodied, section of society. It's the ethnic and the less educated who seem to be the ones rushing off to work, often low-paid work, and couldn't find the time to protest even if they wanted to. A lot of people have, uh, have got the Wall Street nonsense. Well, completely wrong. Look, it's not about politics. It's about sociology. It's not connected to the, the civil rights marches of the 1960s or even the anti-war gatherings during Vietnam. Rather, Rather, it's the Jack Layton melodrama, the Princess Diana mass neurosis, the Vancouver riots, an episode of Oprah. It's a happening, something to be part of, something to give meaning and communal significance to otherwise empty and dusty lives. And we used to ask what people had done in the war when Nazi psychopaths and Japanese fascists could take over the world. Now we sit in overpriced coffee shops and share anecdotes about what the police did to us during the G20. Hey, man, it was like, yeah, like a, like a movie. There are myriad stories of people making a little trip to the Wall Street Party in the hope of, of finding a cause, shopping with politics. I, mean, I can't imagine a Syrian demonstrator, for example, running between Assad's bullets, asking himself if it's environmental decay or animal liberation that pushes his buttons. And worst of all, are the portentous Labour and leftist party leaders who know it's all garbage, but they, they can cash in on the whole thing and tell us that this is really, really important. If I hear one more person begin a defence of the occupation with what you have to understand, I'll turn it into a drinking song. Actually, comrades, what you have to understand is that this is a bourgeois conceit, a mere souffle, and it'll disappear with just a little breath of clean, fresh wind.